welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We're entering the month of Shvat, and according to the Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Formation, the letter that rules this month is the, the letter Tzadik, or Tzadi, as it's known. Um, this letter is the 18th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Its numerical value is 90. It sounds, and the meaning is righteous, righteous, righteousness. And so it is connected to the tzaddik, to the righteous person. And the tzaddik is the foundation of the world. We know that for the world to be able to subsist, to be able to function, to exist, we need to have air at every moment 36 Lamet Vav, which are 36 tzaddikim that sustain the world. So this very righteous holy people sustain the world. There are some that are hidden that we don't know who they are. It can be the bartender, it can be uh, someone that's cleaning the floors, or it can be a very, a person that looks very pious. Uh, anyways, this person, that, these people that are very, very holy are an extension, really, they don't have an agenda of their own. They don't live on their own terms. They don't have an ego. They're not egocentric. They're completely selfless and altruistic, and they only do what Hashem wants them to do. So the foundation of the world is the consummate tzaddik, uh, of the generation. In every generation, we have a tzaddik that is like the, the head of the generation. Uh, we're in this moment reading the book of Shemot in, 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 in Parasha. And uh, as we know, the first tzaddik in the Jewish world that we called a Rebbe, that was a Rebbe of the masses, was Moshe Rabbeinu. And so we know from here that the, the tzaddik of the generation personifies the tree of life uh, in the Gan Eden. You know, in the, in the Gan Eden, there were many trees, but there were two very important trees. One was the, the tree of life, which is the Torah, and the other one is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is a tree from which Adam and Eve ate, and from then on, everything went down. So the, the tzaddik is connected to the tree of life, and in the Torah, man is called the tree of, 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 the, tree of the field. The tree of the field, it's, it's, um, it's how we're, we're called. Uh, this month, we're gonna be celebrating the holiday of Tu Bishvat, which is the Rosh Hashanah, the, the, the new year of the, of the trees. So also in the Torah, uh, we know that that, that is knowledge, and that that, the numerical value, the gematria of that, of, of knowledge, is 474. And the, 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 the tree of the field, man is a tree of the field, also has this numerical value. So we know that the power of connection uh, of, of Shvat implies the power of being able to connect to a, a tzaddik. And um, it's something interesting that we have to understand that uh, Jewish people cannot have deities, we cannot pray to other people or to other or saints or, or prophets. We don't pray to Moshe Rabbeinu. We don't pray to Abraham or Isaac or Yaakov. Uh, but when a Jew connects to a tzaddik, he's, being able, he's, he's able to connect to God. He doesn't pray to the tzaddik, he prays that in the merit of the tzaddik, our prayers should be answered. This is something that it's important to understand because many people feel that going to the, to the, uh, to the resting places of the tzaddikim is a little bit like Abu Dhatsara because people go there and they're idol worshiping the tzaddik. But in truth, um, Jews are very far from idol worshiping. It's more, uh, we don't know where Moshe Rabbeinu is buried because of this reason, because Hashem didn't want people to pray to him. But the, when you go to a resting place of a, of a tzaddik, uh, when they give you the little book so you can pray, it never says uh, the name of the tzaddik. It says that in the merit of this tzaddik, such and such that is here, you're 
uh, tefillahs, your prayer should be answered. And this is something interesting, interesting and important to understand, and that by connecting to a tzaddik, the Jew is, uh, has more merit to connect to God. So there's a story told of a man that was living in California, and he once came to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, who was a tzaddik of the generation, and he came for a pri private uh, audience, it's called a Yehi Yehidus, and this poor man was afflicted with a horrible psoriasis in his, in his skin. He was desperate, he had gone to every doctor, every treatment, he hadn't been able to get rid of it. And so he came to the Rebbe and he says, I heard incredible things about you. I heard that you're a miracle worker and that you can save me, that you can take away my, my psoriasis, my, my pain. And so he says, as for my background, I'm a Holocaust survivor. I went through the Holocaust and I don't pray to God and I don't believe in God. That is what he said. But I do believe in Sadiqim, completely righteous individuals. My father was a Bob over Hasid and he always went to his Rebbe for advice and for blessings. So I do believe in the power of Tzadikim. So the Rebbe looked at, the, looked at this man and he said, and he replied to him, a tzaddik is merely an extension of God here in this world. Uh, he's not, he doesn't have a, 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 an agenda. He doesn't have an, a separate existence from God, which he does by tapping into God's powers. If you don't believe in God, then I cannot do anything for you because the true healer is Hashem through me. I'm not the one that's healing you, it's God. So the man waved his hand and he says, eh, I still believe in Sadiqim. Like he said, I don't believe in God, but I still believe in Sadiqim. So the Rebbe told him to take off his shirt and, on, and undershirt and he started putting his hands around him. And, um, and he put his two hands around him and uh, suddenly this psoriasis disappeared. The Rebbe repeated the action with the man's left arm and again uh, his men's scales receded. The Rebbe took his two hands and applied them to the man's chest and back and the psoriasis fell away, it disappeared. The Rebbe told his visitor that he normally did not perform these open revealed miracles. Generally, heaven, heavenly assistant would appear in a more concealed way but there are always exceptions to the rule and he hoped that from that day on the man would start praying to God and thanking him for the healing he had received. So, so we see that tzaddik, uh, the, the, the sign of a tzaddik is, uh, is a different design from a human being. The Alter Rebbe in Histania has a whole chapter explaining what a tzaddik is. Uh, there's three types of Jews. We have a Rasha, which is a person that sometimes has bad thoughts and he falls into them. There's different levels of Rasha. Uh, there's very evil Rashas and there's people that uh, do evil, but they're not evil people. They, they wouldn't do evil to people. In uh, the Torah terminology, evil means that you do something that goes against God. So if a Jew doesn't keep Shabbat, or doesn't eat kosher food, or doesn't give his adaka, this is considered evil. So uh, a Rasha is a person that can have a bad thought and he acts on it. Then you have the Tzaddik, which is a complete righteous person. He's completely the opposite of the Rasha. He has no evil inclination. He has no evil thoughts whatsoever. So he never falls. And, um, and then there's a third category, which is in the middle, and he's called a Benoni. And this Benoni is known as the intermediate man. And this is a person that does have the bad, uh, the bad thought. He has a Yetzer Hara, he has a bad inclination, but he's battling it all day and he never falls. So his action is like the action of a tzaddik, but internally he's not like a tzaddik. So Hashem really is not asking us to be tzaddikim. Uh, there's cases in which people have battled a lot in their lives, their bad inclination, and they come and they become tzaddikim. But in truth, what Hashem wants from us is that we act like them and we behave in a very holy ma manner because a Jew is meant to be holy. So, so we see that the, the design of this letter tzaddik is a yud and on top of the letter is a nun. I don't know if you can see it here, 
but for those who don't know how a tzaddik looks, I don't know if it looks uh, on reverse, but it, it has, <coughs> it has, um, it has on top of the letter a nun and, and a yud. It's a yud with a nun. So one interpretation of the nun is that it stands for ona, which is deceit and fraud. And by nature, most of us has this misconception that it is physical, that it is the physical world that is the source of ultimate truth and pleasure. But the yud of divine intellect is added to the nun to teach us that the material world is ephemeral and not the source of consummate goodness and joy. Therefore, there must be something truer and more godly upon which to focus. And this is the heightened intention. Intention is the essence of the tzaddik. So the essence of the tzaddik is that he's holy, that there's holiness, that the neshama, the soul of a person, is completely godly. It's, it's, it's not, it has no animalistic um, instinctive desires. The neshama, which is an essence, it's a piece, like the Rebbe says, the Alter Rebbe, it's a mamish, a piece, it's truly a piece of God within you, is completely uh, pure and holy. So the Sohar recounts that when God wanted to create the world, every letter of the Aleph base, of the alphabet, of the Jewish, of the Hebrew alphabet, came before him and said, God created the world with me, and the Taf came first, and the Shin, and so on. And then the Tzaddik appeared before God and said, God created the world with me. I am the Tzaddik, the righteous one. So God responded, yes, but because you are righteous, you must be hidden. And therefore, I cannot create the world with you. So Hasidus uh, asks, why is this so? If the Tzaddik is righteous, why wouldn't God have wanted to use it to create the world? And every creature in the world would have been upright, and there would be no Yetzirahara, and everybody would have been completely righteous. So, so, and we would have lived in a world that is safe and wholesome, peaceful. So the answer is that it would be too easy. It would have been too easy, and God's intention is that we should be born into an incomplete physical world, and strive to perfect it. So Hashem created us to come and finish His work. He didn't give us a perfect world. He didn't give us a finished world, a finished product. He gave us something to work on. And so we have to work on our midot, on our character traits, on refining ourselves, and also tikkun olam, on perfecting the world where you stand. If you see something that needs to be changed, you have to go and do something about it, because if you wouldn't see it, it means that that's not part of of your purpose in life. So with the godliness that flows from the youth, we can strengthen our ability to overcome the noon and the pleasures of the corporeal world. The tzaddik must therefore be concealed in, the, in creation so that one strives for righteousness on his own. So it would have been very easy to make everybody very righteous, but at the end of the day, then it would defeat the whole purpose of creation, which is to make a dwelling place for God in this world through our nature, through overcoming our nature and, and, and doing what Hashem wants us to do. So, so we see that the name Sadiq means righteous one, and a leader and teacher of a generation. We also know that many tzaddikim are called Rebbes, and this tradition began with Moshe Rabbeinu, the first Rebbe of the Jewish people, and another famous tzaddik known as the Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi, who was also known as um, the Prince. He was the redactor of the Mishnah, and there is also a Rebbe in every generation. So we have, throughout the Jewish history, many, many tzaddikim. Uh, we have the Baal Shem Tov, the, the Balatanya, Rabbi Nachman de Breslov. We have many tzaddikim that have shaped this world. And what is the concept of a Rebbe? The Rebbe is an acronym for Rosh Bene Israel, which is the, the head of the Jewish people. And what is the head? The head of a body is the control center of the body. So the head is what gives life, nourishment, is what allows the body to move and to direct itself in the right direction. So a Rebbe then is both literally and figuratively the head of the Jewish community. And when a person has a dilemma, 
what should he do? He should go to the Rebbe. So today we don't have uh, many open and revealed Rebbes. There's many holy people in the land of Israel and places like in America. Uh, and people go to them to ask for advice and to ask for blessings. Also, you can go to the, to the resting place of a previous tzaddik, also pray there. Uh, there's the Ohel in Queens where the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe is buried next to his father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, Yosef Yitzhak. Many miracles have happened in that place. People have been going and crying there and leaving their, their letters. Uh, it's more today, you can even send a letter via email to the Ohel and they'll read it there. So a Rebbe's ability to intervene on behalf of the Jewish people is no, not magic. It is a natural and organic outgrowth of his righteousness. So just as it is perfect, perfectly normal for the head to feel and respond to the needs of the whole body, it is natural for the Rebbe to feel and respond to the needs of his people. We have to understand that the Rebbe is not the regular person. It's not a person that lives life uh, like we live our lives. It's a person that is beyond life. So, so we see that um, that the letter tzaddik also uh, has two forms. There is a bent tzaddik which occurs at the beginning of a middle word, word, like when you write a word in Hebrew and you have a tzaddik in the middle, then it's gonna be a bent tzaddik. It's gonna be, uh, the letter is gonna look bent, but if you have it at the end of the, of, the, of the word, it's gonna be a straight tzaddik. And what is the significance of each? The straight tzaddik represents the Balshuva. And the Balshuva is actually that Benoni, is that intermediate person that is always struggling against his nature. He's always having an internal battle. And at the end, he's always trying to do what Hashem wants him to do. And he works on it. And, and when a, it says that wherever a, a Balshuva stands, a tzaddik cannot stand. And the Ben Sadik is, is a born righteous person, but has not yet reached the level of a Balshuva. As we are told, even a complete tzaddik cannot stand in the place of a Balshuva, and a Balshuva stand higher. So what does this mean? How is it possible that a Balshuva, one who has sinned all his life, decides to change, stands higher than a tzaddik? So there's two reasons, explains Hasidut. The first is that the one who was transgressed has already, already tasted transgression. So for example, a Jew that uh, changes his whole life, changes what he eats, how he dresses, uh, what he reads, what he looks at, uh, he has already tasted that other world. So, uh, you know, maybe he's gonna miss a cheeseburger. <laughs> maybe one day he smells uh, the, the shrimps in a re walking in the street and he smells them and he's reminded of how good they are. But nevertheless, this person will be strong and will, won't fall down into that temptation. But a tzaddik, on the other hand, has never in his whole life eaten shrimps or eaten a cheeseburger. He doesn't know what he's missing. He's always kept Shabbat. He's always learned Torah. He's always been righteous. So he has no way of knowing what he's missing. So the, the Balshuva is a person that really, is a person that really it has to really work his nature every day of his life to be able to be connected to Hashem. And this, the, the, the price of this has no name, that there's no, the, the, no, not the most righteous person can stand in the place where a person who's struggling all day and, 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 he's, and he's winning his battles, eh, the, the, the tzaddik cannot stand. And also the second reason, that the, the Balshuva stands higher than the Sadiq is that all his wrongdoings, every horrible thing he did in his life, once he does the Shuva, become a merits. It transforms into merits. So, for example, um, a person that, that did horrible things in his life, let's talk about a good Rasha, a very bad Rasha, that he, he did horrible things, he sold drugs, he, he, he was a, a gambler, or whatever, and suddenly he becomes a tzaddik, and then he takes his whole life 
to be able to inspire other people to turn to Hashem, you know he's gonna be able to change lives because he's been there, he understands them. So all the bad he did in his life at the end becomes good because, because of that bad that he's able to come and do good for others and others can become righteous. So this is the, um, some of the meanings of the tzaddik. Uh, when we learn in the Tanya how wonderful that tzaddik is, and we know that we most part probably won't become a tzaddik, then the question is why, why does the Alter Rebbe make us learn of what a tzaddik is? Why is it so important that a regular Jew like us will come to learn what, how a tzaddik is? And the truth is because although we cannot become tzaddikim, it's very hard to become a tzaddik, uh, we can always behave like them. We can always get inspired by them. We can always think like them. We can see how they act, how they think, how they behave, and we can incorporate these midots, these ways of, of, of how they are with the, with the world. We can emulate them. And this is the purpose. So when a Jew emulates a tzaddik, uh, what he does is that he's really emulating God. He's emulating Hashem's ways. And you see a tzaddik is so, so, so humble and he's so righteous and he's always looking at the good in people and he's always doing good for others, then we can incorporate these ways of looking at the world, we can incorporate this way of being. And in that way, we can really come to live a little higher. So I wish you a, a, a Rosh Chodesh Tov, a good month, a blessed month in every aspect of your life in every, every area, and we may be strengthened to be the people that we're meant to be. And remember, live a little higher. Thank you.